170. People even claim to see satellites with their naked eyes, but this is ridiculous considering they are smaller than a bus and allegedly 100 plus miles away. It is impossible to see anything so small that far away. Even using telescopes, no one claims to discern the shape of satellites, but rather describes seeing passing moving lights, which could easily be any number of things, from airplanes to drones to shooting stars or other unidentified flying objects. 171. NASA claims there are upwards of 20,000 satellites floating around Earth's upper atmosphere, sending us radio, television, GPS, and taking pictures of the planet. All these supposed satellite pictures, however, are admittedly composite images edited in Photoshop. They claim to receive ribbons of imagery from satellites, which must then be spliced together to create composite images of the Earth, all of which are clearly CGI and not photographs. If Earth were truly a ball, with 20,000 satellites orbiting, it would be a simple matter to mount a camera and take some real photographs. The fact that no real satellite photographs of the supposed ball Earth exist in favor of NASA's ribbons of composite CG imagery is further proof that we are not being told the truth. 172. If you pick any cloud in the sky and watch for several minutes, two things will happen. The clouds will move and they will morph, gradually changing shape. In official NASA footage of the spinning ball Earth, such as the Galileo time-lapse video, however, clouds are constantly shown for 24 plus hours at a time and not moving or morphing whatsoever. This is completely impossible, further proof that NASA produces fake CGI videos and further evidence that Earth is not a spinning ball. 173. NASA has several alleged photographs of the ball Earth which show several exact duplicate cloud patterns. The likelihood of having two or three clouds of the exact same shape in the same picture is as likely as finding two or three people with the exact same fingerprints. In fact, it is a solid proof that the clouds were copied and pasted in a computer program and that such pictures showing a ball-shaped Earth are fakes. 174. NASA graphics artists have placed things like faces, dragons, and even the word sex into cloud patterns over their various ball Earth pictures. Their recent 2015 Pluto pictures even clearly have a picture of Disney's Pluto the dog layered into the background. Such blatant fraud goes unnoticed by the hypnotized masses, but provides further proof of the illegitimacy of NASA and their spinning ball planet mythos. 175. Professional photo analysts have dissected several NASA images of the ball Earth and found undeniable proof of computer editing. For example, images of the Earth allegedly taken from the moon have proven to be copied and pasted in as evidenced by rectangular cuts found in the black background around the Earth by adjusting brightness and contrast levels. If they were truly on the moon and Earth was truly a ball, there would be no need to fake such pictures. 176. When NASA's images of the ball Earth are compared with one another, the coloration of the land and oceans and relative size of the continents are consistently so drastically different from one another as to prove beyond any reasonable doubt that the pictures are all fake. 177. In the documentary A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Moon, you can watch official leaked NASA footage showing Apollo 11 astronauts Buzz Aldrin, Neil Armstrong, and Michael Collins for almost an hour using transparencies and camera tricks to fake shots of a round Earth. They communicate over audio with Control in Houston about how to accurately stage the shot, and someone keeps prompting them on how to effectively manipulate the camera to achieve the desired effect. First they blacked out all the windows except for a downward facing circular one, which they aimed the camera towards from several feet away. This created the illusion of a ball-shaped Earth surrounded by the blackness of space, when in fact it was simply a round window in their dark cabin. Neil Armstrong claimed at this point to be 130,000 miles from the Earth, halfway to the moon. But when camera tricks were finished, the viewer could see for themselves the astronauts were not more than a couple dozen miles above the Earth's surface, likely flying in a high-altitude plane. 178. People claim Google Earth somehow proves the ball model without realizing that Google Earth is simply a composite program of images taken from high-altitude planes and street-level car cameras superimposed onto a CGI model of a ball Earth. The same could just as easily be molded onto a square Earth or any other shape and therefore cannot be used as proof of Earth's rotundity. 179. If the Earth were constantly spinning eastward a thousand miles per hour, then airplane flight durations going eastward versus westwards should be significantly different. If the average commercial airliner travels 500 miles per hour, 
it follows that westbound equatorial flights should reach their destination at approximately thrice the speed as their eastbound return flights. In reality, however, the differences in east and westbound flight durations usually amount to a matter of minutes and nothing near what would occur on a thousand mile per hour spinning ball earth. 180. The spinning ball model dictates that the earth and atmosphere would be moving together at approximately 500 miles per hour at the mid-latitudes where LA to New York City flights take place. The average commercial airliner traveling 500 miles per hour takes five and a half hours traveling east with the alleged rotation of the earth so the return flight west should take only 2.75 hours. But in fact, we find that the average New York to LA flight takes six hours, a flight time totally inconsistent with the spinning ball model. 181. Flights eastwards with the alleged spin of the ball Earth from Tokyo to LA take an average of 10 and a half hours. Therefore, the return flights westwards against the alleged spin should take an average of five and a quarter hours, but in actual fact, take an average of 11 and a half hours another flight time totally inconsistent with the spinning ball model. 182. Flights eastward with the alleged spin of the ball Earth from New York to London take an average of 7 hours. Therefore, the return flights westwards against the alleged spin should take an average of 3.5 hours, but in actual fact take an average of 7.5 hours, a flight time totally inconsistent with the spinning ball model. 183. Flights eastward from Chicago to Boston with the alleged spin of the ball Earth take an average of two and a quarter hours. Therefore, the return flights westwards against the alleged spin should take an average of just over an hour. But in actual fact, take an average of two and three quarters hours. Once again, completely inconsistent with the spinning ball model. 184. Flights eastward from Paris to Rome with the alleged spin of the ball Earth take an average of two hours. Therefore, the return flights westward against the alleged spin should take an average of one hour, but in actual fact, have an average flight duration of two hours and ten minutes, a flight time totally inconsistent with the spinning ball model. 185. We are told that the Earth and atmosphere spin together at such a perfect uniform velocity that no one in history has ever seen, heard, felt, or measured the supposed 1,000 mile per hour movement. This is then often compared to traveling in a car at uniform velocity, where we only feel the movement during acceleration or deceleration. In reality, however, even with eyes closed, windows up, over smooth tar in a luxury car at a mere uniform 50 miles per hour, the movement absolutely can be felt. At 20 times this speed, Earth's imaginary 1000 mile per hour spin would most certainly be noticeable, felt, seen, and heard by all. 186. People sensitive to motion sickness feel distinct unease and physical discomfort from motion as slight as an elevator or train ride. This means that the thousand mile per hour alleged uniform spin of the earth has no effect on such people, but add an extra 50 miles per hour uniform velocity of a car and their stomach starts turning knots. The idea that motion sickness is nowhere apparent in anyone at a thousand miles per hour, but suddenly comes about at a thousand fifty miles per hour is ridiculous and proves the earth is not in motion whatsoever. 187. The second law of thermodynamics, otherwise known as the law of entropy, along with the fundamental principles of friction and resistance, determine the impossibility of Earth being a uniformly spinning ball. Over time, the spinning ball Earth would experience measurable amounts of drag, constantly slowing the spin and lengthening the amount of hours per day. As not the slightest such change has ever been observed in all of recorded history, it is absurd to assume the Earth has ever moved an inch. 188. Over the years, NASA has twice changed their story regarding the shape of the Earth. At first, they maintained Earth was a perfect sphere, which later changed to an oblate spheroid flattened at the poles, and then changed again to being pear-shaped, as the southern hemisphere allegedly bulges out as well. Unfortunately for NASA, however, none of their official pictures show an oblate spheroid or pear-shaped Earth. All their pictures, contrary to their words, show a spherical, and clearly CGI fake, Earth. 189. The Bible, Quran, Srimad, Bhagavatam, and many other holy books describe and purport the existence of a geocentric stationary flat earth. For example, 1 Chronicles 16.30 and Psalm 96.10 both read, He has fixed the earth firm, immovable. And Psalm 93.1 says, The world also is established that it cannot be moved. The Bible also repeatedly affirms that the earth is outstretched as a plane, with the outstretched heavens everywhere above, not all around giving a scriptural proof the earth is not a spinning ball. 190. 
cultures the world over throughout history have all described and purported the existence of a geocentric stationary flat earth. Egyptians, Indians, Mayans, Chinese, Native Americans, and literally every ancient civilization on earth had a geocentric flat earth cosmology. Before Pythagoras, the idea of a spinning ball earth was non-existent, and even after Pythagoras, it remained an obscure minority view until 2,000 years later when Copernicus began reviving the heliocentric theory. 191. From Pythagoras to Copernicus, Galileo and Newton, to modern astronauts like Aldrin Armstrong and Collins, to director of NASA and grand commander of the 33rd degree, C. Fred Kleinknecht, the founding fathers of the spinning ball mythos have all been Freemasons. The fact that so many members of this, the largest and oldest secret society in existence, have all been co-conspirators bringing about this literal planetary revolution is beyond the possibility of coincidence and provides proof of organized collusion in creating and maintaining this multi-generational deception. 192. Quoting Terra Firma by David Wardlaw Scott, the system of the universe as taught by modern astronomers being founded entirely on theory, for the truth of which they are unable to advance one single real proof, they have entrenched themselves in a conspiracy of silence, and declined to answer any objections which may be made to their hypothesis. Copernicus himself, who revived the theory of the heathen philosopher Pythagoras and his great exponent Sir Isaac Newton, confessed that their system of a revolving earth was only a possibility and could not be proved by facts. It is only their followers who have decorated it with the name of an exact science, yea, according to them, the most exact of all the sciences. Yet one astronomer royal for England once said, speaking of the motion of the whole solar system, the matter is left in a most delightful state of uncertainty, and I shall be very glad if anyone can help me out of it. What a very sad position for an exact science to be in is this. 193. No child or unindoctrinated man in their right mind would ever conclude or even conceive, given to their own devices, based on their own personal observations, that the earth was a spinning ball revolving around the sun. Such imaginative theories, nowhere present in anyone's daily experience, require and have required massive amounts of constant propaganda to uphold the illusion. 194. From David Ward Lascott. Every member being taught, when a boy, that the earth was a great ball revolving at a very rapid rate around the sun, and when I expressed to my teacher my fears that the waters of the oceans would tumble off, I was told that they were prevented from doing so by Newton's great law of gravitation, which kept everything in its proper place. I presume that my continence must have shown some signs of incredulity, for my teacher immediately added, I can show you a direct proof of this. A man can whirl around his head a pail filled with water without it being spilt, and so, in like manner, can the oceans be carried around the sun without losing a drop. As this illustration was evidently intended to settle the matter, I then said no more upon the subject. Had such been proposed to me afterwards as a man, I would have answered somewhat as follows. Sir, I beg to say that the illustration you have given of a man whirling a pail of water around his head and the oceans revolving around the sun does not in any degree confirm your argument because the water in the two cases is placed under entirely different circumstances, but, to be of any value, the conditions in each case must be the same, which here they are not. The pail is a hollow vessel which holds the water inside it, whereas, according to your teaching, the earth is a ball with a continuous curvature outside, which, in agreement with the laws of nature, could not retain any water. 195. Astronomers say the magical magnetism of gravity is what keeps the oceans of the world stuck to the ball earth. They claim that because the earth is so massive, by virtue of this mass it creates a magic force able to hold people, oceans, and atmosphere tightly clung to the underside of the spinning ball. Unfortunately, however, they cannot provide any practical example of this on a scale smaller than the planetary. A spinning wet tennis ball, for instance, has the exact opposite effect of the supposed ball earth. Any water poured over it simply falls off the sides, and giving it a spin results in water flying off 360 degrees like a dog shaking off after a bath. Astronomers concede the wet tennis ball example displays the opposite effect of their supposed ball earth, but claim that at some unknown mass, the magic adhesive properties of gravity suddenly kick in, allowing the spinning wet tennis ball earth to keep every drop of gravitized water stuck to the surface. When such an unproven theory goes against all experiments, experience, and common sense, it is high time to drop the theory. 196. Quoting Marshall Hall. In short, the sun, moon, and stars are actually doing precisely what everyone throughout all of history has seen them do. 
We do not believe what our eyes tell us because we've been taught a counterfeit system which demands that we believe what has never been confirmed by observation or experiment. That counterfeit system demands that the Earth rotate on an axis every 24 hours at a speed of over a thousand miles per hour at the equator. No one has ever, ever, ever seen or felt such movement, nor seen or felt the 67,000 mile per hour speed of Earth's alleged orbit around the Sun, or its 500,000 mile per hour alleged speed around a galaxy, or its retreat from an alleged Big Bang at over 67 million miles per hour. Remember, no experiment has ever shown the Earth to be moving. Add to that the fact that the alleged rotational speed we've all been taught as scientific fact must decrease every inch or mile one goes north or south of the equator, and it becomes readily apparent that such things as accurate aerial bombing in World War II, down a chimney from 25,000 feet with a plane going any direction at high speed, would have been impossible if calculated on an Earth moving below at several hundred miles per hour and constantly changing with the latitude. 197. Some people claim there is no motive for such a grand-scale deception, and that flat or ball makes no difference. By removing Earth from the motionless center of the universe, these masons have moved us physically and metaphysically from a place of supreme importance to one of complete nihilistic indifference. If the Earth is the center of the universe, then the ideas of God, creation, and a purpose for human existence are resplendent. But if the Earth is just one of billions of planets revolving around billions of stars and billions of galaxies, then the ideas of God, creation, and a specific purpose for Earth and human existence become highly implausible. By surreptitiously indoctrinating us into their scientific materialist sun worship, not only do we lose faith in anything beyond the material, we gain absolute faith in materiality, superficiality, status, selfishness, hedonism, and consumerism. If there's no god and everyone's just an accident, then all that really matters is me, me, me. They've turned Madonna, the mother of God, into a material girl living in a material world. Their rich, powerful corporations with slick sun cult logos sell us idols to worship, slowly taking over the world while we tacitly believe their science, vote for their politicians, buy their products, listen to their music and watch their movies, sacrificing our souls at the altar of materialism. To quote Morris Klein, the heliocentric theory, by putting the sun at the center of the universe, made man appear to be just one of a possible host of wanderers drifting through a cold sky. It seemed less likely that he was born to live gloriously and to attain paradise upon his death. Less likely, too, was it that he was the object of God's ministrations. 198. Some say that the idea of an intergenerational worldwide conspiracy to delude the masses sounds implausible or unrealistic. But these people need only familiarize themselves with the works and writings of Freemasons themselves, for example, John Robeson, who exposed this in his 1798 book, Proofs of a Conspiracy Against All the Religions and Governments of Europe, carried out in the secret meetings of the Freemasons, Illuminati, and Reading Societies. Supreme Commander of the 33rd Degree Albert Pike was quite forthcoming in several letters regarding the Masons' ultimate goal of world domination, and the Zionist Protocols of the Learned Elders of Zion, the exact plan by which this would be and has been carried out, is completely disclosed. 199. From Foundations of Many Generations by E. S. Sheeney. The only thing the fable of the revolving earth has done? It has shown the terrible power of a lie. A lie has the power to make a man a mental slave, so that he dares not back the evidence of his own senses. To deny the plain and obvious movement of the sun he sees before him, when he feels himself standing on an earth utterly devoid of motion, at the suggestion of someone else, he's prepared to accept that he's spinning furiously around. When he sees a bird flying and gaining over the ground, he's prepared to believe that the ground is really traveling a great number of times faster than the bird. Finally, in order to uphold the imagination of a madman, he is prepared to accuse his maker of forming for him a sensiferous lie. 200. Finally, from Dr. Robotham. Thus we see that this Newtonian philosophy is devoid of consistency. Its details are the result of an entire violation of the laws of legitimate reasoning, and all its premises are assumed. It is, in fact, nothing more than an assumption upon assumption, and the conclusions derived therefrom willfully considered as things proved, and to be employed as truths to substantiate the first and fundamental assumptions. 
such a juggle and jumble of fancies and falsehoods, extended and intensified as in theoretical astronomy, is calculated to make the unprejudiced inquirer revolt with horror from the terrible conjuration which has been practiced upon him, to sternly resolve to resist its further progress, to endeavor to overthrow the entire edifice, and to bury in its ruins the false honors which have been associated with its fabricators and which still attach to its devotees. For the learning, the patience, the perseverance and devotion for which they have ever been examples, honor and applause need not be withheld, but their false reasoning, the advantages they have taken of the general ignorance of mankind in respect to astronomical subjects and the unfounded theories they have advanced and defended, cannot be otherwise than regretted and ought to be by every means possible uprooted. For more information about our flat earth, read The Flat Earth Conspiracy by Eric Dubay, and visit AtlanteanConspiracy.com and Eifers.Boards.net.